America, eventually becoming a professor at Brandeis in University of California, San Diego. Marcuse labored to finish the intellectual work begun by Horkheimer, Adorno, and Fromm in the 1930s. Marcuse, on the other, stand, on the other hand, remained in the United States and um, during the 50s and 60s developed some of their earlier ideas, emerging uh, Freud and Marx, interested in aesthetics, and interested in cultural, um, uh, let's say, tendencies towards what he would call negation, uh, which were usable in a, a campaign to call into question the uh, what uh, Antonio Gramsci would have called hegemony of uh, uh, capitalist uh, bourgeois culture. And Marcuse became, uh, of course, the so-called guru of the new left. It was Marcuse who finally answered the question posed by Horkheimer in the early 30s. Who could substitute for the working class as an agent of revolution? So you had to find some new constituency, uh, whether it was students or blacks or women or gays or whatever it was. And, and Marcuse had a fluid Marxism that fit into this. Martin Jay confirms the role of the Frankfurt School in creating the victim groups that constitute the politically correct coalition. Uh, but the working class wouldn't play the hegemonic role that traditional Marxism had expected from it. And so uh, students, uh, blacks, um, other minority groups, women, uh, and so forth were, uh, they hoped at least, uh, able to come together. Of critical importance for the injection of the Frankfurt School's work into the student rebellion of the 1960s was Marcuse's revival of Fromm's notion of sexual liberation. Marcuse, however, was the main conduit of ideas. But Marcuse had written one important work in the 1950s called Eros and Civilization, a work which attempted to rub Freud against the grain and come out with a radical, even utopian reading of psychoanalysis. And that, combined with Norman O. Brown's Life Against Death, had a great impact on the counterculture and on uh, emphasizing a libidinal element. Marcuse's Eros and Civilization condemned all restrictions on sexual behavior, calling instead for polymorphous perversity. Instead, it argues that at certain early developmental levels of the human uh, psyche, uh, there was a potential for sexual expression, sexual pleasure, which had not yet been organized into the restricted uh, notions of uh, heterosexual uh, sexuality. And that these had some sort of capacity to be uh, reinvigorated. Polymorphous perversity helped open the door to aspects of political correctness, such as gay liberation. This is, this is his idea of what uh, uh, human society, a uh, good human society should be based on, was a, a certain kind of polymorphous perversity and narcissism, which uh, by liberating um, uh, non-procreative eros was his term, uh, we, we would uh, find great enlightenment and great happiness. This was the, supposed to be the key to utopia. David Horowitz ties eros and civilization directly into the 60s rebellion he was part of. Marxism is a, a bankrupt creed and was bankrupt in, in by the 50s or earlier. People understood it didn't it didn't work. There was no working class that was going to make a revolution. Capitalism. People were happy with capitalism, basically because it makes well, it's spread more money to more people than any other system in history. So they tried to find other uh, sources of revolutionary. Uh, energy, and one was the idea of sexual repression on the sixth day. I mean, it was a way of and people always think up complicated theories to you know do what they want to do. People wanted to do a lot in the sixties, so and Herbert Marcuse you know gave them the intellectual justification for having a lot of sex with a lot of people uh, a lot of the time. That's what Eros and Civilization. That's the title of his famous book on it uh, is about. Marcuse is also the source of one of political correctness's most notable characteristics. It's total intolerance for any viewpoint but its own. Marcuse argued that our free American society was actually a deception, that its true tolerance is somehow repressive, while he argued for something called liberating tolerance. And what he meant by that was liberating toleration or liberating tolerance meant intolerance from ideas of movements from the right and tolerance for any ideas from the left. Uh, it's a, you know, a recipe for uh, repression. Even Martin Jay, a great admirer of the Frankfurt School, 
admits the totalitarian aspect of Marcuse. Perhaps his most significant essay in terms of impact, the one we haven't even mentioned, an essay on repressive tolerance, uh, written in the late 60s, which argued that uh, because the um, tolerance of different beliefs produced no action at all, because every belief seemed to be equal to uh, all others, and uh, racist and uh, neo-fascist and militarist beliefs were given equal weight to those that were pacifist and emancipatory. Uh, this led ultimately to the uh, problems of uh, political correctness and incorrectness uh, in the 1980s. Uh, that is, if you had a strong notion of who was politically correct, you could then be intolerant to those who weren't. And sometimes this can be used as a license by people on the left to deny uh, free speech to people they disagree with. Through these works, Marcuse became the main agent of transmission of the Frankfurt School's ideas. Marcuse was a tremendously important uh, influence on the thinking of uh, young people in those days. He was one of the, the uh, spiritual fathers of the movement. And through Marcuse, the new left found the rest of the Frankfurt School. And then in the 1960s, they were rediscovered by students uh, who uh, looked back at the work they'd done and rediscovered a source of a non-traditional, non-communist Marxism which they found as an inspiration for the uh, student movement in the 1960s. Jay pays Marcuse uh, the ultimate he, compliment as a revolutionary. Scene. He became a kind of celebrity. I mean, in Paris, there were banners that said Marx, Mao, and Marcuse. So he was, uh, you know, luckily because of the alliteration up there with a couple of uh, pretty heavy hitters. And the consequences of the Frankfurt School's work now engulf us all. Martin Jay pays them due credit. Well, it's fascinating. If you compare them with other figures from the so-called Western Marxist tradition, they are perhaps more alive than virtually anybody else. Roger Kimball, although coming from the opposite political perspective from Martin Jay, agrees. The institution of um, the ideas of radical multiculturalism in the academy and uh, what you might call its enforcement wing, namely the ideology of political correctness, uh, testify to the uh, um, vitality uh, of some of those ideas, some of the ideas of the Frankfurt School. We asked former New Left leader David Horowitz what the members of the Frankfurt School, Horkheimer, Adorno, Marcuse, might think if they could come back and visit one of America's politically correct campuses today. Well, I, I'm sure they would be 